is now it's time to create an instance. I have no machines yet. I just click this button here in launch instance. We only have one data center for our cloud. Uh, we could have uh, more, but for now we have only this one called Nova. We will have a name for our machine. Uh, I will start with a, a little machine uh, called Zeros. Uh, and we have something called flavors. And flavors are, uh, we have created some sort of basic setup for different machines. So a tiny has one virtual CPU, one gig of hard disk, and, uh, and 512 megabytes of RAM. If I change this to a small, and you see that these settings will be updated. Uh, and for the zeros, it's quite enough with the tiny. We can create a multiple instances if we want to, but we we'll only create one for now. And what will be the boot device? What will this be for an uh, image? And you can create a, little, a lot of different boot devices, but we have some prepared images. So you just uh, choose boot from image, and here we have some. Uh, and this one, as you see, is quite small. It's only 13 megabytes, but it is a complete operating system. Uh, after that, we have the access and security. Here, since we have created a, a key pair, uh, we don't have to do that, and we should use this one. We have installed that key. And the security groups are uh, a sort of a firewall to the external net. So nothing will be allowed uh, in, to, uh, in or out of that network without a, a security group. And we have a default one, which is only uh, allowing stuff to go out from the machines. You can't go into them from the internet. So you should enable this if you want to be able to get download uh, updates and stuff. The network uh, will be chosen since we only have one. So it will be added uh, automatically. If we have multiple, you will have to choose which one you want. So you can say that you are connecting this machine to a, a switch, which is collected, connected to our LAN. Then we could put in some, if we want some script or stuff to uh, be executed after this machine is done. But we won't use that. We just hit launch. So hopefully this will work. Yes. You can go to the a console, uh, a web-based console. And we see that the machine is up and running. Uh, if you use this Cirrus image, you must be very careful because it has a default password. So if you will make this accessible outside of the inter uh, from the internet side, for you to be able to connect to it, you must change the password. Otherwise, other people could use this because it's, it's a default one and, and a lot of people know this. And we will have a, a set of IP addresses. Uh, I don't know how many, a couple of hundreds uh, for external use. And they will soon be noticed on the internet and started to be trying to be hacked. So this serious machine is just for testing, actually. So only connect that to the internet if you're for a short uh, period of time and hopefully you should uh, change the password. One problem we have with this web console is that it is based on a English keyboard. And here we have Swedish ones. And we can't get some of these uh, characters uh, as of now. So you won't be able to log into this system if I try to. I have a key for the uh, the ending parentheses, uh, but 
it, when I type that, it will take the first one. And I haven't found the correct key here, so we will use our key file instead uh, to connect this. Um, but here you can do some simple things. Uh, uh, if we have a Windows with a, with a graphical interface, the mouse will be quite laggy uh, and we, hard to work with, so we will use another uh, system to, to do that. But if you just have to enter an IP address or some small thing to get things working, then you can use this console. Okay, let's go back to the instances. Uh, we connected it to a network, our LAN. So it will get an IP address. But as you see, this is a private address. And the physical machine that I am, am on is not in that network. And you will not be in this network either with your machine. You are coming from the internet uh, through this. So you won't be able to, to access this directly. So how do we administer our machines? Well, we have these floating IPs. So we can connect a floating IP and we have to first create one. And we will ask our external net pool for an address. You can only have five uh, because we don't have a, a lot of these uh, external IP addresses. So you are asking the system, oh, can I have one of your uh, public IP addresses? And it says, okay, here you got one. And then we connect these two addresses together. So the machine, the virtual machine won't know this address actually. It only knows, it's only configured with this. But when we are connecting to these addresses, our router in our cloud will connect this to this private network. So you see here that we have one private and one floating IPs. So will I be able to connect to this one now? Let's see. It won't answer. And that's because of the security group that I was talking about. Uh, we won't let any net uh, traffic into our network without specifying it. So we have this access and security and our security group. And here we have a default, which we all will have. And it will, the ingress is for stuff coming into my system and the egress is stuff going out from my network. And as you see, we don't use IPv6 here, so you can uh, ignore uh, these two rules actually. Uh, but we have an egress for IPv4 for any protocol and any uh, port and any remote address. So we will c be able to go out from our network at full. But we also have a rule for the incoming which specifies none. So it can't be accessed outside of the network. So if we wanted to, we could add rules to this one, but then we probably will have a lot of machines connected to this default security group. Uh, which wouldn't be a preferred way. So if you want to be able to SSH into this machine, you will probably create a new security group. So you can see this as firewall sets of rules. If you have a, a, a web servers, like 10 of them, and you want five different ports to be open to these, then you have one group of security for this, that one, and then you connect those to the machines. But I will only use this for SSH of now, so I name it in some good way, and then we'll manage rules. As you see, it always says that the first one is to deny, uh, to, to allow uh, everything out from the network. You could change that if you wanted. And, and here you specify the rule. The direction, incoming, this is what it is, and port, and where uh, you could uh, be from. If you have a, a public, uh, a static IP address at home, uh, I will encourage you to uh, put your address here. So then only your computer will be able to come into the network. But if you don't, and you don't know your external, then you have to 
make this and this makes sure that everyone be able to connect to it. They have a, a predefined rule for SSH which we could use. So, could we access the machine now? Uh, SSH zeros is the, you haven't used SSH before probably, it's a way to connect to a terminal, another uh, bash terminal. Uh, I will talk more about SSH again in the security lecture, but for now we use it to connect to other machines uh, via uh, uh, encrypted uh, line. And it works like this, you type the SSH, which is the command, and then you have the, the username, and then an at sign, the computer uh, ad address, or, um, DNS address, or IP address. And if you don't specify a zeros, I think is the, the uh, username, and yeah, you have the IP address which should be, oh, we don't see it here. This one. Uh, as you see, this address here, labcloudftk.lnu.se, uh, we have mapped all of our floating IPs to, so they have a real DNS name, just to be easier to remember for you. So after the FTK, you can just type the last part of the address. So 109 will be mapped to that address. So if we don't have so we don't have to know all the, the full IP address. If I open up another and look up this address, so if we type the correct command and as look up you see that we will get the same address here. So we can use that uh, when we try to connect to it. But this won't work, uh, as you might have imagined, because we created the security group, but we haven't connected it to our machine. So if we go to the machine settings and edit security group, we could add this. So now we have two. We can have a lot of these different firewall rules. So if we get a success for that one, yes, good. All right. Try to connect, and now uh, the first time I connect to a machine, it will have to store the uh, RSA fingerprint to my known computers. Uh, so we just type yes for this one. And now I'm connected to that machine. So if I try to ping google.com, it will be able to get out uh, from its own network. And we also see that it has DNS lookup. We could check the if config. We see that it doesn't know anything about this public address. It only has the knowledge of its uh, private one. Uh, so, good. Good, 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 good. Let's talk a little bit about the CLI. We have a, a command line interface to be able to script creating of machines and stuff like that. Uh, Let's, if you wanted to exit out a machine when you're connected with SSH to it, you just type exit. And now I'm connected back to my machine. 